Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. <laughs> I want to maybe just start with something that a lot of people face, and it's this reality that there's some days when we feel disinterested or unconnected or maybe connected to frustration or it's not working out. What can we do to be more happy and balanced and more in our true essence? Well, I think one thing that's really important and to make this as simple as possible is that there is a belief that when I'm not feeling one specific way, if I'm not feeling high, if I'm not feeling happy, mm. if I'm not feeling loved, or if I'm not feeling connected or aligned, however we define it, balanced, then something must be wrong, something's in my way, I'm less than and less I'm always my idealized depiction of full capacity. And what happens is, is that that sets us up for a big fall because basically it sets up a premise that says that something outside of me can shake me out of my sense of alignment if I'm not feeling one specific way all the time. Now what we start to realize is we start to really dive deeply into the evolution of our consciousness or as I call it the heart of awakening is that instead of looking at this feeling defines me as being here in my path this feeling defines me as being three steps back in my path. And instead of defining ourselves by any vibrational frequency or emotion, instead we surrender to a much simpler heart-centered knowing. And that heart-centered knowing says, good, bad, or indifferent, I only attract the very feelings that somehow in my life I have judged as being good versus bad or bad versus good, and I'm only revisiting this emotion, this feeling, no matter what life had to do in my storyline to conjure it up as the end result of some sort of outcome. No matter what I am feeling in my body, I am only revisiting an emotion that has either been believed, judged, avoided, passed away, or blamed, and it has never received what it's always wanted to receive, which is the love that only I can give to it. So what we start to realize in the surrender within the heart of awakening is that whether I like how I feel, whether I want to feel this way, or I wish I felt differently, whether I'm judging the feeling, whether I'm blaming others as a result of this feeling, can I accept that I don't have to like it? I don't have to accept it instead of trying to embrace it. I can just accept the fact that it's only arising so that perhaps the most uncomfortable feeling in my body or the most tangible proof of imbalance can start to be seen as equally in need and deserving of love as all of the heightened states that I prefer. And as we allow ourselves to begin sending I love yous not to the feelings that are uncomfortable, but to the one within ourselves who's experiencing such discomfort, as if to say, my goodness, I'm in such a state of frustration. I'm in such a state of jealousy or judgment. I right now am screaming out for my own loving attention. And can I just whisper some I love yous to my own heart? Can I be the one who loves me right now more than anyone else has loved me during an emotion that based on my past, reminds me of a time when I wasn't loved the way I wish to be loved. And as we take the time to love ourselves in the face of adversity, circumstances, or unfavorable outcomes, 
we start to realize that everything only arises within us so that we can answer the call to loving ourselves no matter what emotion arises. And when no emotion that arises or no thought that arises inspires us to do anything else but to love the one who thinks that or to love the one who feels that, at that point, we have transmuted all internal judgments within our being. And once we have transmuted all the judgments within our being, we start to live free of something called conditioning. And we start to become a living manifestation of our soul and form. And once we start to embody that higher light frequency, then it's only a matter of time between, before the world starts to reflect back to us a transforming world that reflects back that same vibrational frequency within the play of humanity. Mm. I love that. And so what you're saying is instead of us judging the emotion or labeling it or saying, okay, how do we quickly get rid of this or quote-unquote clear this, which seems to be a, a parlance that's used a lot in the energy space, it, what that is is a part of us, it's an, an energy or an emotion that is seeking love, that needs love, that needs expression. That, that's absolutely true. I would say instead of even, I would, I would even say, hmm. instead of not trying to judge, to recognize that when you're judging, it's an opportunity to love the one who judges instead of to judge the one who judges. So oftentimes, you know, in the spiritual journey, there is this, there is this sense of I'm going to find something that feels uncomfortable and I'm going to clear it out of my field. But yes. in the fifth dimension, love actually clears everything on our behalf. All we have to do is be the one that welcomes love into our heart, even you know during times when we feel most uncomfortable. So it's kind of like we invite love into our heart by whispering I love you to our own heart, and then love does all the transmuting on its own instead of having to create a spiritual ego that thinks in charge of their own process. Mm, I, I get that, and I can see exactly. You know, I can feel the difference in my body, and one of the things we're going to be doing is giving people the chance to to feel this concentrated and where they're feeling it now i know a lot of people are saying this is exactly what i've needed to hear thank you i've gotten about five people saying that um matt your journey did you always have this understanding or what was the process like for you and i think a, a lot of folks feel like well if it's not instantaneous then you know there's something wrong with me and and maybe your awakening will help people realize that it, it can be a process right yeah i i have had both instantaneous awakenings and i've also had a lifetime of endless awakening in the space <laughs> now where in every breath there is not a moment of my life that isn't an awakening so it's kind yeah. of at a certain point you know the gravity of awakening pulls you so deep to where Awakening is the very breath you breathe. Awakening is the is the sight and smell, taste and touch of the world around you. But if I look at my journey from the beginning, um, my first awakening was, let's say I had an experience, and I'm trying to think what age I was. I could have been six or seven, where I was walking to a friend's house, and I saw this kind of brick wall dividing their property from my other neighbor's property and I just looked at this wall and I stopped in mid-step and without you know any kind of thought or foresight I just had this recognition that I am not the wall I am mm. not the one who sees the wall I'm the space between it and I had no idea what that meant I didn't even have it was such a smooth realization that it, that it wasn't even as if there was a childlike part of me that thought that's strange it was like I had the experience it planted a seed and then I moved on to go play Nintendo with my friend and then when I was eight, I had an out-of-body experience, and I went to what people describe as heaven, and I met with some guides. And mm. when I fell back in my body, that's when I started to have this experience of in my peripheral vision. I had angels and guides walking with me, and then when I was about 17, they started to speak to me, and I speak to angels and masters as if I'm speaking to you right now that clearly. And then, of course, I had the experience where I was whisked off into the Akashic Records, to visit with all the angels and ascended masters that I usually meet with, they all stood in front of me, they lifted up their chins like their masks, and they were all me underneath it. And what was funny was when that happened, I gasped. And then I said to them, I don't get it. And then they said to me, we're not only what you're becoming, we are already what you've become. 
we are aspects of the divine that have stepped back in time to visit ourselves in spiritual childhood. And so what began in that realization was not just being a character who has the universe on speed dial, but starting to merge into that light of all-knowing radiance and in the disappearance of my attachment to being a character with a past, with any sense of attachment to, you know, gender, past, family, any association, I literally went through a process, which is what you're talking about, a process of merging into and becoming that which I transmit. Mm. And so that's a process because there's the, there's one thing when a, you get your intuitive abilities activated and you have God on speed dial and you become this really powerful being and that can create its new identity structure. It's another thing when you're even willing to hand all that over and fully dissolve into the mystery of that which is manifesting itself as space and time, sight and sound. And so now I have this really interesting experience where I'm living out this play where I have the joy of being able to touch so many lives. And yet, what is dressed up as all the people I'm serving and what is dressed up as the one who serves them is the same eternal light of consciousness. And so it's yeah. it's, it's such a wonderful play, and there is kind of a process to it. And I think the reason for the process, because it's one thing to say, I want an instantaneous realization. Most right. of the time, it's because people want instantaneous relief, and there's nothing wrong with instantaneous relief, but it's one thing to be freed from your hardship, and it's another thing when the life that you were you know, raised to understand disappears. Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barzani, host of the Wealth Revolution, and if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're gonna get access not only to a free gift that's gonna double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also gonna get to be a part of the US Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now, daily, where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna to get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, you'll even get to be one-on-one -on -one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join, and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you'd like to see more of it, click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.